Greetings, demons, and welcome to Warhammer Weekly, episode 32. So, just like last week, I don't actually have any pickups, so we're going to be getting straight into the topics, and thankfully, there is actually a little bit more to talk about than we've had in those previous weeks. So, uh, yeah, let's not preamble anymore, let's jump into it and roll the intro. Not the leader of a cult, rabbit with sex. So, starting off with a bit of interesting news that actually comes from Citadel, um, technically Games Workshop, I know, but... It is a different entity in a way, just like our Forge Wars, technically a separate entity. And that is the new Storm Vault skirmish case. So obviously, Games Workshop and Citadel have produced a lot of carry cases over the years. Um, some of them better than others. A lot of them have actually been pretty good. The most new design um, had... It was essentially the old design, just they swapped the foam to be like triangles instead. And I personally thought that was a little bit weird. But um, yeah, in general, very good history of making good carry cases not the best in the industry there's definitely better options and like magnetized cases i'm going off on a tangent here but like yeah there's a new skirmish case and this one is very interesting indeed so it's essentially a box full of silicone spikes that's the best way to describe it i feel and by the looks of it it actually holds models pretty well you seem to have a lot of options in terms of how they're held um in general it seems to be able to hold a variety of different size models. We actually get shown Stormcast Eternals, um, Space Marines, which do appear to be Primaris, I'm pretty sure, and then one of the other factions from Age of Sigmar, which I do not personally rec- recognize, but it's some horse riders look kind of undead. But uh, yeah, in, in general, it's a pretty interesting design for a carry case. I'm personally not too interested in it. I have magnetized my uh, models for the cases and stuff, so that's been my way of dealing with it for a long time. But uh, yeah, in in general, it's nice to see that Citadel aren't producing more hobby gear, essentially. It's always nice to see what they do. And, you know, I've said before, I quite like Citadel's range. Um, I recently, well, not recently, the most recent thing I got from them was the um, drill, the hand drill. Uh, Really good. Probably one of my favorite pieces of um, hobby gear that I actually own, but... uh, Yeah, it's just cool to see that they're still making new stuff, and it's different, and it's, you know, I've never seen this specific design for a carry case, so, you know, if it works, it looks pretty good, it looks like it holds a variety of your more battle line style models, and, uh, yeah, in general, just just a, a nice new addition to anybody's, I guess, carry case or transporting of miniatures. But moving on from first party Warhammer, we actually have two different reveals which I'm going to get into as two separate topics but yeah starting off we saw a little teaser and I did actually cover this a few weeks ago it might have been over a month ago at this point and that is the new joy toy models and uh yeah they they look excellent so we have a Lionel Johnson in joy toy form and he of course comes with his two watches in the dark absolutely lovely it is very much based on the new uh, mini for it we also have Azrael I believe it is um, which also seems to be very much based on the Mini. And yeah, it looks pretty good overall. Both of them have a lot of nice options in terms of different heads and different uh, weapon options and stuff like that, which is always nice to see. And uh, just in general, if you're a fan of Dark Angels especially, this is a really good selection of items um, to get just for display case um, fodder, essentially. I know a lot of people actually, you know, customize things like Joy Toys and the, uh, more likely the McFarlane figures, oh, which I do own a few of myself, but, uh, yeah, very, very cool, and, uh, I think we also recently saw some actual pictures, I'm not going to put them on screen, but you'll be able to find them on Reddit or wherever, we actually found some, um, in-person images of the Joy Toy, um, oh, Grey Knight Walker, I can't remember what they're called, Baby Carrier, I can't remember what it's actually called, though, um, and that thing is absolutely massive, that looks beautiful, but, uh, yeah, more great Joy Toy figures, and uh, yeah, I'm quite enjoying seeing all the Joy Toy stuff. Not something that I'm overly interested in, you know, especially with the price. It's not really something that I'm that willing to get, as I say, I already have some McFarlane stuff, so that's kind of my, you know, action figure Warhammer stuff, but uh, yeah, some very nice um, Dark Angels, and I'm sure people are going to be very excited to get those in hand, but uh, yeah, moving on. We also have a new collaboration for some, you know, third-party Warhammer stuff from Tomy. And if you don't know, Tomy are a huge Japanese toy manufacturer. Uh, they actually have the license for things like um, Sonic. I believe they at least at some point had the license for, like, all of Nintendo stuff. Um, and they still have a lot of, of really good licenses now. But, 
yeah, they now, or they may have already, but in any case, they're releasing new plushies, um, mostly based around, oh, actually, yeah, I'm going to say mostly based around 40k, one of them is just kind of both, uh, in, a, in its own weird way, but we have the Great and Clean one, we have a Nasha Squig, which is the one that I'm like, it technically is in both, we have a, uh, what is it called, it's, oh boy, it's a Spanagrot, I was like, it's a grot of some kind, I can't remember which one, it's a Spanagrot, and then we also have the Griff Hound, which is obviously from AOS, and these are absolutely adorable, together they look great, uh, personally, I'm most interested, of course, in the squig. I love my squigs. But honestly, all of these except for the Griffhound are possible pickups for me. Um, the Spanagrot is great. I love my squigs. And the uh, the great and clean one is just beautiful. We've obviously seen a plushie of a Nurgling before. And if you have that one, which I unfortunately don't, this would make a great addition to that, even though they are from different brands, I do believe. But um, yeah, just overall, some very, very nice little plushies and... I'm hoping they're not too expensive. Tomi tends to be pretty good value, and uh, I'm sure these are going to be available on the Games Workshop website as well as the merch store, as well as Tomi's own website, and probably in some stores as well. Um, but yeah, just some very, very nice little plushies there. But moving into the realm of actual miniatures, we actually got a few different Necromunda reveals this week. So, in general, I'm not going to go into too much detail with these, but we do have the... Van Sar Arachne Rigs. Now, that seems weird to me, just being called that, because they don't really look like spiders, but moving on from that, these are some really, really cool little mechs. They look very different from anything we've, at least in my in, in my recollection, have seen from Necromunda, or just 40k in general, and they, they honestly do look really cool. I love the flight stands. I know a lot of people don't like flight stands of that kind, but for this, I think it really works. It gives them a really dynamic pose, and hopefully there is a little bit of, you know, possibility with them in general that you can move the arms about a little bit, get them into a bit more of like a, you know, action pose potentially, rather than just like a jumping or diving pose. But uh, in general, these are some very interesting models, minis, whatever. Vansar isn't a faction from Necromunda that I'm overly familiar with, but, you know, if the rest of the faction looks like this, I might, I might look into it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, in general, some very, very nice models there. We also have, for the Ash Nomads, the Spirit Speaker, and um, yeah, he has a little bat friend, looks pretty cool overall, not thing to, oh, she actually, looking at the model again, it, is actually, it does appear to be a she. Um, there is a little Squat Prospector head, or helmet, that the bird creature has got, which is uh, kind of sad, I do like my Squat Prospectors, I've, I've made it clear before there, actually, what I use for my um, Votan army, so, you know, it's kind of sad to see those. But uh, yeah, very, very cool model. We also have, for the Ash Wastes, the Outpost um, terrain set, which looks very nice. A lot of high up terrain, a lot of uh, platforms and stuff, and stairways and that, the, and the like. And uh, in general, just a lot of good stuff to look at. Overall, Necromunda is one of those that's very hit on miss for me. This time around, it's a lot of good stuff. Uh, there is actually a new book, Ruins of Jardlan which um, I believe is going to come with uh, more of the rules for the newer newer models and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, overall, Necromunda, hit or miss for me, but this time I like everything here. Nothing is screaming at me that I should get it, though I am very tempted. Just the, just because it has the little uh, the little squat helmet, I am very tempted to get the uh, the bird creature with with the, what is it called again, the uh, the spirit speaker. And uh, yeah, just just looks very, very cool. But yeah, moving on from Necromunda, that is actually everything we have for the 40k universe, so let's go back 10,000 years. And this week for Heresy Thursday, we did get something a little bit um, disappointing in a way, and it's a little bit weird as well to talk about. So, it is more Legions Imperialis, which I too have got a bit tired of that. I think I mentioned that a few weeks ago, that I was starting to get a bit bored of Legions Imperialis. I wish it was out. If it was out right now, I'd be way more interested, but as it is... Uh, it is what it is, but we are going to be getting the drop pod, and that's great, that's cool. Um, we're actually getting both the people carrier and the missile launcher drop pods, which is really nice to see, really nice to see the variety there. And uh, yeah, in general, it, it's cool that we're getting the drop pods, you know, it means that it's going to make it a lot easier for you to do deep striking and stuff, and honestly, like things like that are very important for, you know, a 40k, 30k style game. 
So, you know, it's nice that they're introducing the drop pod in there. As I say, I, I, I can't say too much about it just because I want the game in hand. I want it in front of me. I want to be playing it, painting up models, all that kind of stuff. As it is, you know, I have I have my Tyranids from Epic that are, you know, based and well, based they are put together, should I say, which is a bit literally just putting them on the bases. And, you know, I have um a few odd bits from like Eldari and stuff from Epic. I don't have any Space Marine stuff because I've kind of avoided it, just because that's what I'm gonna be doing for Legion of the Perilous. But I'm I'm starting to get impatient, and I don't really want to go for the Epic stuff, because the Epic stuff looks somewhat worse than the, you know, Imperialist stuff. It's just a shame that it's not out yet, especially when it was supposed to be out, like, at this point two months ago. I just, I don't know, it, it's just annoying to me. But still, they look great. They are some really nice little drop pods. I'm sure they're going to be a hassle to put together, especially the People Carrier one, just because it has all the little seating they need to put into it. But yeah, overall, some very nice little mini miniatures, and uh, nice to see in drop pods coming to Epic Scale again. So, yeah, moving on from that. For our penum- penultimate, even, uh, topic, we actually go to the Mortal Realms, but it is Warcry related. We actually got nothing from Mainline 40k or Mainline AOS, weirdly enough, um, that in terms of mo- uh, miniatures and stuff. And that is the new Scales of Talaxis Warcry terrain set. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit odd. This is all terrain for... Um, for the Lizardkin, for the uh, Seraphon, and I don't quite get why this is what we've got. And I, I say that this could easily be for many different factions. I believe it actually does say something about the Dwarven aspect of it somewhere in the text. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, this was originally advertised as being um, Seraphon, so I'm going to go with that. And it, it looks nice. It looks interesting. It's kind of weird, though, that we're just getting this on its own, out of nowhere, typically you get, you know, a terrain kit with a set, with a kit uh, that comes with, you know, one or two Warcry warbands. This time around, we're just getting the Warcry terrain, and a lot of people have said it's actually, you know, for the best that we're going to be getting, you know, terrain separately from, you know, the new Oryx and the new um, Fire fi- fire Walkers, or whatever they're called, the, the Dwarves, um, you know, and I do agree if you're someone who is interested in getting those factions but doesn't really care about getting both, uh, which, you know, for me, I love my Oryx, I don't really care about the dwarves in, in AOS, it it makes sense, you know, it makes sense to introduce, you know, the separation of them, and I'm sure they're probably going to go back to having bundles in the future, but, uh, yeah, overall, it's nice Seraphon terrain, it looks quite nice overall, um, the little trees with the faces in them and stuff like that is very interesting, and yeah, it's it's just Seraphon terrain. It's nothing too special. I've seen a lot of this like aesthetic before. So um, yeah, if if you're making a diorama, I'm sure it's gonna be lovely to get. I'm sure it's gonna be very expensive if you're just doing it for gaming. But uh, yeah, new terrain, and that is the last proper topic really. So moving into the actual last thing that we're going to be discussing this week, and that is the rumor engine for the 26th of September 2023, and I can say with absolute confidence, this is 40k. (laughs) I cannot say specifically what it is, but it is a gun barrel for a 40k weapon. It could be Necromunda, it could be um, Kill Team, it could be, you know, it could be any of the side games for 40k, but it's 40k. It is definitely 40k, and if I was to throw a guess out there, I'm going to say it's either going to be for um, Imperial Guard, for you know, for uh, Adeptus Mortarum, or it's going to be something to do with a random new, maybe Sniper Scout, um, but Space Marine thing in general. I don't know for sure, it looks very Imperium to me, it may even be Chaos to be fair, but uh, yeah, it's like a dual barrel barrel. It's, 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 all, it's a dual barrel thing. I don't know what it is for. I lean towards it being some sort of ranged weapon, whether that, as I say, is for the um, Guard or whether that's for the Space Marines. I can't say for sure. It's even possible it could be actually for um, the Adeptus Sororitas, though they haven't got anything new in a little while, and I don't think they're going to be getting anything anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, my my guess is this is going to be a special weapon for Sniper Scouts. Like, you, they can all have single-barrel snipers except for one, and that's their heavy sniper, and it's just it fires twice as many shots or whatever. Uh, which I guess, I don't know how many shots Sniper Scouts originally shoot anyway, I'd assume it's one, 
um, each, and then I guess this heavy sniper would shoot two, maybe? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, overall, that is everything that we have to talk about this week. So, in any case, that's going to be it for this video. So, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe for now, and turn on and ring the bell so you never miss upload. Otherwise, comment below what did you think of any of the reveals. I'm especially interested in hearing what people think about the new miniature carry case, uh, as well as the collaboration stuff, both the Joy Toy and the Tomy stuff. Uh, tell me what you think of that. I'm really interested, but obviously, if you want to talk about anything in the comments below, even if it's not necessarily covered in this video, if it's Warhammer related, I want to talk about it, I want to hear from you. And, uh, yeah, otherwise it's going to be for a video, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Look at the screen, you'll be fine. Cultures of disease, but worlds survive. I just want to take.